She loves me for who I am. And, and I love her for who she is. Uh, I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with her. Kyle, I slept with her. Uh, guys, uh, your friend shows a different visions that um, it's mean by comedy today. How was handling comedy for you and... I think I think we have sort of a, a you know we grew up on American comedy so we have this sort of love for you know classic American uh, comedies but I think the thing that we also really have a shared love for is the sort of old silent film comedies the like Buster Keaton sort of physical comedy that 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 has this sort of universal appeal to it and I think I think we responded to sort of both those things and and tried to figure out a way to combine you know, our sense of cinema and the cinema we love to watch and those two sort of comedies, the sort of broader American comedy, but also the physical, you know, the physical comedy yeah. aspect of it. Uh, I love the film. I love the characters, especially the character of Gay Rankin. Uh, what was it like working with her? Uh, she's, she's amazing. She's a, a brilliant actress um, who, you know, has uh, a really just, has done a lot of theater and um so really brought um brought exactly what we were hoping for in the role and that you know she was really comfortable living in the scenes for long periods of time and just immersing herself into the character and um you know we would the, the rehearsal process and and the 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 rehearsal days would be very long and it'd be a lot of takes over and over again and and uh gail was just amazing because we would continue to grow and mold and find new things in the performance as we got closer to our to our shooting day so it, it was a um i mean she she really embodied that character in a way that we we, we couldn't be happier with one of the point of the film is a friend a concept of a friend uh, we see uh, what it means to be a good friend and the importance of realizing when someone is good or bad for you uh, and we also see the toxic romance uh, we love this concept so what's something uh, that resonate in your our friendship um yeah, I mean, I think I think it's less the, our relationship with each other and more sort of the the friendships that we've had over the years that we sort of tapped into for those sort of uh, looks at, you know, what you might consider toxic or, or you know, beneficial. I think for us, maybe as as important is how blurry the lines get between toxic and beneficial, you know, that that you know, some friends that we that we think their actions might be toxic might actually be what we needed to hear but weren't ready to hear, or or that their kindness has led to, you know, them not saying what they honestly feel, which ultimately leads to problems. So I think part of what we wanted to explore is that, you know, th things aren't always what they seem in terms of people's actions. And sometimes it's worth, you know, taking a fresh look at why they did the things they did uh, and, and how it affected us. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, finally, guys, uh, could you tell me uh, what it's what like for you to be a Canis uh, last year? Oh, I mean, Can was, uh, it was amazing. It was just uh, like one of those uh, dream situations and experiences that you that you that you always hope might happen someday, but are never sure if it ever will. So so, you know, that was a really, um, it was just eye opening and very, we were just humbled by the experience of being there. I mean, the films that we saw while we were there, we were blown away by and, and you know, to, to, to be there and to uh, premiere the film and to have a really positive response and, and to, you know, have that experience. I, I don't know if anything will quite match that ever. Yeah. Ah! If I catch you, I'm gonna kill you. I know, that's why I waited for the hell. Ah, ah. Yeah, you got this. Mike, shut up, Dig.